live from the Dunkin' Latte Lounge. Hey, yo, what's going on? My name is Josh Martinez. Welcome to our Dunkin' Lounge and our guest, Wynn Starks. So the first song I'm gonna sing is my, actually my latest single, and it's called Who I Am. And I recently got the opportunity to perform this on AGT, and I got to honor my twin brother, who I, I lost my twin brother in 2020, so um, this is one of his favorite songs. So I got to sing it on there and, and honor him, and that was huge for me, you know? And so I hope you enjoy it, too. I am. in but not anymore got two feet on the floor this is it i'm stronger than ever before but in my imposition but this is my conviction i need to get this off my mind i gotta be me gotta be i gotta be who i know i am inside can finally breathe taking it in look at me flying it's always been there, it just took me a minute to find it If I were to be anybody else, I'd just be hiding Who I am Who I am Looking back, back on a little boy Never gave him a chance to ever be more I didn't love him, but I'm gonna love him right now and forever. It's time to push open the door. Pardon my imposition, but this is my conviction. Ain't nothing left to hold me down, no. Gotta be me, gotta be I, gotta be who I know I am inside. Can finally breathe, taking it in, look at me flying. It's always been there, it just took me a minute to find it If I were to be anybody else, I'd just be hiding Who I am Who I am It's always been there, it just took me a minute to find it Actually, it's gonna be on my next album, and um, it's called Giants. I'm digging a little deeper on this song, and um, I hope you enjoy it. Stand on your 
This last single is gonna be, uh, it was my first single um, off my album, it's called Circles. It's a song about love, you know, finding that special one. And um, I'm gonna sing it for y'all. Keeps running circles while my mind. 
<laughs> so uh, you were you were on America's Got Talent yes. uh, recently. How has that experience changed your life? Oh my God, it's changed my life in so many ways. Um, you know, it's cool because like that song was just meant to be like a song about my personal journey and becoming Win Starks and just kind of a di I call it my diary song a little bit, but. It took on a whole nother meaning after AGT. Like, I have people reaching out that are going through grief, too. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's... Because I, I always say, like, it kind of showed me what I was made of these last few years, you know? And so I've been getting so many stories about people who have, you know, been through significant loss and how it's helping them get through that. But then also people who are just the same c coming into themselves and having the courage to step, uh, step out and follow their dreams, too, you know? So it's... It's been incredible, you know. What was the songwriting process uh, for you, for that song? Because obviously it was something that was super personal to you. Yeah, yeah. Is that something that you were journaling and, and in a diary, and then all of a sudden you were like, oh, snap, let me go into songwriting mode? Or was it songwriting mode from the jump? Yeah, so it was songwriting mode. I, I got with two of my good friends. And we wrote it together, Josh Brown, Louis, and Vanessa Campen on. What I love so much is like... Um, I kind of got a little personal on that one, you know what I mean? And so that, that was really cool. <laughs> that was really cool to, you know, be able to have that safe space to, to be able to do that. You know, I love being able to, you know, co-write with people who are are to get me. You know what I'm saying? And so I felt like that was like like a just a glint because I for this next album especially I want to dig more deeper into that that place, you know what I mean? So the second song uh, you performed, uh, was it called Where Are the Giants? Giants? Where are the Giants? Where are the Giants? Giants. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I got daddy issues. Ah. Uh, shout out to us that have those. Um, yep. That's what it's about, <laughs> daddy. Yep. Clearly. Within like 49 seconds over here in the corner, I'm like, damn, that, yeah, that's yeah, hitting me. Yeah. I wasn't planning on getting emotional yeah. at 1144 a.m. on a <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> Yet here we are in the Boy Duncan Latte life. Lounge. Yeah. No, no. So that song, um, where did that, obviously there's, there's stories behind it, your upbringing, yeah, whatever yeah. the situation may be. Um, did you set out to write that particular song with that particular message? How was that songwriting Me process? and Fred wrote that together. Again, I love being able to have that space to write, that safe space to write in. And I, um, that was a little hard for me to talk about that one, you know, because especially because me and my dad are kind of, we've, work through some of those things, but it's still something that I need to say, you know what I mean? And so I try to be sensitive to not 
hurt him in a sense, but at the same time, I have to live in my truth and be honest. So I hope he can appreciate that. You know what I mean? Was there a particular <laughs> was there a particular point in your life where you realized, okay, honesty is going to be my approach towards music, or was that just from day one? That's how you started putting your oh, music God. together. It has not been since day one, but it, it definitely has been part of my journey, even especially with everything. You know, I've just kind of gotten into this place to where I'm like, I have to be myself. I have to be real. I'm not doing. I'm doing a disservice to, to my me and everybody else around me if I can't live in my truth and be authentic and tell my story the way I need to tell it. You know what I mean. What was what were your music inspirations growing up? Because you're from uh, Minnesota, yep. right? And aside from Prince, <laughs> I don't know anything yeah. else, right? And that's coming from someone who lived in Des Moines. <laughs> That was kind of into the Minnesota you're, scene you're, a little bit. You're right next door. And it's right just Prince. Uh, and I'm sure I'm going to get so many hate tweets about that. But uh, what was your musical inspirations growing up? Prince, no. Um, <laughs> no, um, no, Prince was one of them for sure. But, um, and, um, you know, I, I loved all the icons, you know, Whitney, Mariah, uh, Stevie, Michael. I just, I would sit behind the couch and listen to them for hours and study them. <laughs> In their vocals, and yeah, those were my, some of my, inf I have a lot of new ones now too, like Sam Smith and Jasmine Sullivan and her, and, but I'm just always being inspired by, you know, music and new artists and old artists, and so you, <laughs> then you, I mash it into the sound of my, that makes me. Well, I'm interested because a lot of times <laughs> when people come into the Duncan Lounge, they'll yeah. do their, their one single, their two singles, and they always do a cover. You did all originals, which I applaud you for that, by the way. Oh, thank That's you, very thank different. You, That's a very different you. approach, and I appreciate <laughs> I that. I didn't know that yet. Thank but uh, what are your favorite songs to cover? Um, Unchained Melodies, one of them. Um, I love that song. I like a lot of oldies, you know. Yeah. Um, What's the more, uh, God, Stand By Me, I love, um, what's the other one? Um, what's your favorite song to sing in the shower? Because the reverb in the shower uh, is incredible. And I, <laughs> you know, you got to love a good Whitney, I will always love you. You know what I'm saying? I'm not mad at it. I ain't mad at it, dog. Um, but the song that actually, you know, uh, changed your life. Who I am, uh, yeah. charted, uh, on, on charted on Billboard charts. You get yeah. that news. First off, how did you get that news, and what was your reaction to the news? Um, I got it from my A and R, okay. and I'm still processing. <laughs> it's still all uh, it, everything that's happening. is still like I'll have my days where I'm like, oh, holy shit! Like, oh God, it's <laughs> happening. <laughs> you know these things you dreamed about as a kid. You know when you're watching it, kind of just start to happen and it's really cool and I'm, and I'm still processing it. You know and you're going I mean? you're going on a tour. You're going to be you're going to be in New yeah. York City in late November. Do you feel any sort of pressure going out on 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 tour uh, your first tour since kind of everything exploded yeah. in your life? What's that pressure like? Oh, it's pressure. But you know, <laughs> but I went on a tour I opened up for uh, last year for a group Delta Ray and that was my first tour on my own doing my original music and that was like the push out of the nest kind of thing so that was so and I loved try, they I became like family and they're incredible people so I had a lot of fun on that one and I was I was like wow it, I was a little I think I was a little spoiled for my first tour because it went so well you know but so this one I just um, I, I feel like that was kind of my push out and now I'm feeling ready I feel like ready, you know what I mean? If you weren't, tough shit. You ain't got no choice but to do this, dog. Exactly. <laughs> and that's what I feel myself. I'm like, I'm here. it's game time. I'm here now. Ain't no turning back. At that's this it. Point. When you're there, <laughs> lights are on, microphones yeah. on, you gotta perform. Yeah, uh, yeah. what was the pressure like, not only to perform in your home in your home state, uh, but in a packed, sold out stadium, you performed uh, at a Minnesota Vikings game recently. Yeah, uh, NFL team, time, US yeah. Bank, uh, US Bank Stadium, I think it's called. Yeah, um, <laughs> what? I'm a huge sports fan, so I know <laughs> I know dumb shit like stadium names. But uh, what were the nerves like 30 seconds before stepping out onto the field to perform? Same what you were saying. It's game time now. I better bring it, you know. And then, then I have the survivors that were standing on the side of me, you know, because it was for um, breast cancer awareness and 
Um, and that gave me a lot of strength. And then my thinking about my brother and how proud he would be. So a lot of the nerves now, it used to be more f like fear nerves, but now it's just energy nerves. You know what I mean? Like I'm just using it and, and putting that nerve out in what I do. So yeah. what, is, what is something uh, you wish that people would understand about you and your music as you move forward on your career? Uh, I always say, like, when I was young and just even now, you know, you listen. And that's why it's so inspirational to me hearing these messages from people because that same thing I felt when I heard some of my favorite artists, like, you just, like, even a young artist that are coming, you know, you're so inspired and you hear your favorite. And when I get to read those messages from people or people who are just, when they hear a song and they're like, God, you saved my life, or now I want to go after this, and you're my new favorite artist. And I'm like, I remember sending those messages. You know what I mean? To my, to my, <laughs> some of my, you know what I mean? So to get that in return, it just means so much. You know, like, and I, I think that that's what, I'm just out here trying to, you know, in it, like, I want everybody to, um, just go after their dreams fearless. You know what I'm saying? I live so long trying to please everybody and do what everybody else wanted me to do. And I finally started living in my truth and doing, you know, doing me following my gut. And, and it's happening now, and I just want everybody to do that. And I want, I want them to, I want it to be timeless, this music. I want it to be something that can be played hundreds of years from now, you know what I mean, and when people hear it. That same stuff that resonates with me today, the oldies that I could feel like could came out yesterday. I want my music to do that for people, you know? So you want your music to be played in hotel elevators and the type of hotel elevators and hospitality industry that you used to work in. Hey! I'll take, I love it. <laughs> hey. Now, I, yes. I, I gotta ask, you said no. hospitality, you said hospitality in AGT. Yeah. What form of hospitality was it and what did you do? I worked at a hotel, I worked at a law firm first in hospitality. And so I did, like, I set up meetings and ordered the food for, and like made sure everything was right for the meetings and then food wise. And then, um, then I moved over to hotels and, I worked like um, just doing like front desk agent uh, overnight, but I overnight was overnight audit. <laughs> overnight audit. Over it's funny story when I shot the video for who I am. I mean for dancing my way. Um, I had to learn some dance moves, and I'm not a dancer, but I, I knew it's called dancing my way. I, I knew I had to dance for it, right? <laughs> so, so what I'm at work rehearsing. I work the dance moves. This when I still. Hot when I still worked at the hotel, and I'm in the back rehearsing, and the guests would come up, and I would come just full of sweat, and they would be looking at me like, "What the hell are you doing back there?" <laughs> just rehearsing for a music video, you know. Hey, let me just tell you, um, from experience, <laughs> hotels are a soul-sucking job. From experience, no, yeah. So you, if yeah. you need motivation to do what you want to yeah. do in your life, work in a hotel. I'm telling you. you you, so you almost got in trouble for dancing in the back. <laughs> I got in trouble for applying to radio jobs at the front desk because I didn't clear ah, the browser. Yeah. So they just saw oh, a whole list. Oh, you're wearing this together. Okay, I hear you. Okay. I was a bellman. <laughs> yeah, okay. Which was even more humbling. Yeah. Because I'm like holding your bags, praying to God you give me two dollars. So it was super yeah. humbling to be a bellman. Yeah. It. And there, are, I'm not gonna say the branch or the hotel, but they wear red coats. And anytime I see a red coat, I swear to God, it's hmm, like a trigger. What is that one? It's like a um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's like a what trigger. hotel is yeah. that? No. <laughs> we'll talk about it off air more. Um, but what, what was no. your first job? Do you remember your first job? Target. No. My first job, I was 14. I worked at a place called Teen Teamworks. And it was, uh, we went and cleaned parks. Okay. Yeah. So you did well for your community. Full, full time. 14 years old, working eight-hour days. <laughs> you got to start somewhere, yep. and that helped you grind and hustle. It and did. It taught me you, a lot. Probably also made you realize the parks are nasty. The people that go to parks are nasty-ass people nasty. a lot of times. But I know how to clean. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he's doing it all. Uh, what can we expect from you, aside from hospitality, aside from your ability to clean, and your, aside from your ability <laughs> to dance behind the scenes, what can we expect from you moving forward in your music career? <laughs> So I recently got the opportunity to 
where I redo four songs from my album with the Fish Jubilee Singers, and they're out of Nashville. It's a, it's a HBCU, um, a black college, and they, they are incredible. Like they're, very, I've heard of the Fish Jubilee Singers, so that work with them was like a huge honor for me. And I, one of the stories I love to tell this story is that Nashville is known for Music City, and so. Back in the 1800s, um, it was about seven years maybe or so after um, slaves were freed, Emancipation Proclamation, and they went to Europe to perform and do a tour to save the school. And they sang for the queen, and she said, wow, you must be from a city of music because your voices are so beautiful. And I just recently found this out, like this is coming out now that there are a huge reason Queen Victoria and the Fish Jubilee Singers and how Nashville has the name Music City. I just figured it was <laughs> all the country folk that are like, we do yeah. music here. Now I love me some country, don't get me wrong, but it's so cool to hear, especially to see, because my album's called Black is Gold and I'm kind of paying uh, homage to those black creators that went before me and paved the way to do what I'm doing now, you know, and so, and and then, um, uh, and so to be able to have the opportunity was just really huge. And the the um, the music director who was there for 40 years, his name was Dr. Kwame, and it was so amazing to work with him. He just passed away last month, very unexpected. So I'm going to dedicate it to him. And he was, a, and to be able to meet and work with him was so huge for me. And so, yeah, I'm going to dedicate that to him. And now I'm also working on my next album as well, too. How so. can fans stay in contact with you? You can follow me on Instagram, Win Starks, um, Twitter, Win Starks, also um, TikTok. <laughs> Thank you, Win Starks. Um, and then you can go to my website, winstarks.com, for the latest. I'm going, all the dates will be up. I think they're already up now. Um, so you can check check that out and see where I'm going to be. And then we're also going to splat, we're kind of planning a little spring tour as well. So, like so we'll keep you posted on that too. <laughs> and before we go, bonus question, since we are in the Dunkin' Latte Lounge, I need to know, if you had the opportunity to sit in a Dunkin' for 60 minutes with any artist, dead or alive, and you can ask them anything you want, who would you pick? You know, I just recently saw Elton John live in concert. Uh, so I would think it would be Elton. He's so full of history. I would just love to pick his brain and just know what he knows. You know what I'm saying? So definitely Elton. That's Plus, I know. feel like the stories that he has, <laughs> yeah. if he's off the record, <laughs> yeah. would be incredible. I know it would be. <laughs> I already know. That's why I'm like, yeah. So we got to make this happen. Elton? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hey, listen, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? Yeah, so there we right. go. Sir Elton, pay attention to the man. Win Starks. Appreciate you. Duncan. Man. To see more videos like this, check out DuncanLatteLounge.com. And if you're posting on social, use the hashtag DuncanLatteLounge.